What's going on, guys? You know, let's have a conversation. Once again, shout out to the nerd tribe, to the nerd gang, to all my intellectual people. Really appreciate you. Um, if I was a normal YouTuber, I wouldn't do the research that I do. When I get into, let's say investing, I have literally spent months going over investment calculators, looking at the numbers, and the information is pretty solid. You're gonna need a substantial sum of money, which most of America doesn't make, to become a millionaire through investing. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. And I've gone over that, and I've gone over that. One of the big issues that I'm at odds with is the rest of the YouTube community. Um, I have seen this, I've been on YouTube a long time. I have seen YouTube channels that will just parrot or copy other YouTube channels. They won't do any investigation, they won't do any research, they just repeat, regurgitate what this last YouTube channel did. Uh, one of the things is, is the hot topic. Whenever there's a hot topic on YouTube, a lot of people will jump on it because it's going to get guaranteed views. Now, one of the reasons that I don't do that, and you, you hear me if you ever want to start a YouTube channel, once you start feeding the YouTube algorithm a certain type of content, you will have to keep feeding the YouTube algorithm that type of content. And typically, a lot of the saucy, um, trendy, topical stuff, that doesn't mesh well with what I'm trying to do. So I don't do it. I don't jump on it. Like, I've been studying the Russia-Ukraine war thing, and there are things that that will actually fit my content because um, this may push us into a recession sooner versus later. So that might be relevant, but I'm researching it, I'm doing it, I'm looking at it. Um, you know, I don't feel that if I did a video that Putin is trying to rebuild the Soviet Union or the USSR, I don't think it would really do that well on this channel because that's not what people are looking for. So I have to be careful because one of the things that I know is whenever I put up a video that is purely research based, it's numbers, it's heavy on the numbers, it's heavy on the analytics, it typically doesn't do that well. But that's the type of content I like to produce. So I know going in that I'm not going to get the numbers. I'm not going to get the numbers because I'm not here to create fluff or candy YouTube content. Uh, that's what I'm not here for. I'm not here for that. And one of the biggest issues like, um, I want to, once again, shout out. I really appreciate the people who came to the YouTube channel from the five reasons black folks are broke. That's a very specific demographic. So I really appreciate everyone that came in from that video that subscribed to the channel. You will see more of that type of content because now, let, let me go ahead and explain how YouTube works. On YouTube, there are literally a million different audiences that are already on YouTube, already on YouTube. And if you create content, what the YouTube algorithm tries to do is find an audience for that content. And black money I made like well over a year ago and it got picked up and it started pushing that. That video is still doing real. That video is like 350,000 views. And that's the type of content I like to make because it's painful, it's disheartening, 
to see someone come on YouTube and blatantly lie. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say that, they're blatantly lying. I've seen many YouTube channels talk about dividend investing, and it's not about how smart you are. It's not about your right mindset. Is do you have enough money? Like Arthur Blank, good example. Arthur Blank has enough Home Depot stock that he gets 70 million a year because Home Depot is a dividend paying stock. So he has like about three, four billion dollars for, for Home Depot stock. Okay. There is no way that he could have purchased the stock. How did he get that stock? Because he was a founder of Home Depot. <clears throat> you know, that's that's how he got that stock. And if you in a situation where you can get dividend paying stock like that, like Arthur Blank did, that's a win. That makes sense because Arthur Blank did not buy the stock. He was awarded the stock because he was a principal of the Home Depot. Totally different game. Totally different game. Arthur Blank, he doesn't have to balance his check. He don't have to do none of that stuff. Because his dividend income is quite substantial. Even after taxes, he's still going to have about 50 million. About 50 million. And one of the things that I want to do because uh, that's why I put up that video talking about what I do and how I get money and how it is very, very hard to teach people how to do that. Number one, it ain't quick. It ain't quick. I spent almost six months when I came to YouTube pushing my book, and this is the thing, I was promoting my book. Like, here, here's one of the things, because a lot of people, they say they come here for the business content. If you notice, this channel has become a economic channel. I don't really talk about business here. I talk about business at the House of Pain. I talk about business at the corporate game. Those are the channels for business. And I'm not hitting that, and I don't get I don't understand these comments like I came here for the business advice when I'm talking about the economy. Since October, I've been talking about the economy, not business. And I haven't been trying to sell anything either. I literally wake up and I have people it's like, hey, how do I buy this? How do I buy this? And I was like, uh, but wait a minute. I'm going to put some out in the, in the, in the, in the future. <clears throat> Because one of the things that I have learned is to educate people how to do something, you need to do it. This is why I got in the car rental business because you know my plans was to get in the car rental business and to create an online course how to get in the car rental business. I did not understand before I got in the car rental business that the car rental business was a dumpster fire. I did not understand that. I will never, ever create an online course teaching people how to get in the car business. In my opinion, it's a bad business. So this is one of the things that I feel that I have a fiduciary duty to be honest and upfront with you guys. So I would never, ever create that course because once I got into it and I started, I started to see how hard it was how much capital that you needed. And it's a very capital intensive business. Like right now, I got someone I got to answer to because once again, long-term rental, he ran over some and now he wants me to pay for the tire. And I'm just not paying for the tire because he ran over some. And it is just one of the most irritating things that happens. And don't get me started on the tickets. <clears throat> but to teach you how to write a book. That's like, here's the whole process of how to write a book. You wake up every day and depending upon your stamina, when my, my writing stamina was high, I could go four hours a day. I could write four hours a day. And at, and once, you know, if, if you've written a book and you know what it's like to write a book, after four hours, my mind would turn to mush. 
it was just there was nothing else I, I mean the tank was completely empty so I would write four hours and I was trying to figure out ways that I could write faster because when I was like in the section that I was really jamming I could do 4,000 words in one day but teaching you how to write a book and there are many people out there that you want to go out and have your books created in a third world country where you can pay these people peanuts and then throw the book in on Amazon and get passive income. I don't know anything about that. I've never done that. I don't know anything about that. I don't even know how that works. So I wouldn't even get into trying to suggest or school someone on how to do that. But let's just take the act of writing a book. You're going to spend months some people spend years writing a book and you don't know if it's going to sell once you're done once again let me say this again you can spend months or years writing a book and you don't know if it's going to sell once you're done you have no clue if it's going to sell you have no concept if it's going to sell and that's kind of what i do now, I've had a lot of experience. I have created many programs and stuff that just didn't sell. Just didn't sell. And one of the things is I had to learn how to sell the online course. I had to, because I'll tell you one of the things I used to do. Like, I would like, this week it's like this, and then I would dramatically increase the price in a week. That's too quick. That, that just doesn't work. That doesn't work. Um, what I have learned is to, because uh, this is what I'm going to do for this next product, is to do stages. Because once again, this is something new that I have never done before. But based upon the information and knowledge I have, I feel it's going to work very well. Because here's the issue. Let's say you have a course and you sell it for $5,000, right? And this is something that I have never, ever done. I don't do Black Friday sales. I will never sell a course for 5,000 and then put it on sale for 50% off in the future. That's just, because what's gonna happen is people are gonna learn not to trust you. It's like, I paid $5,000 for this course and now he's selling it or worse, 70% off or 80% off. I don't do that. I don't do that because one of the things I have learned, because I've never done that, I've never been um, crazy about that. And that's something else. I don't have a lot of, I don't have sales. I don't have sales. Uh, one of the things that you're doing when you do that is training people to wait you out. It's like, okay, he's got it at five. But I know from history that in a few months, he's going to be selling it for 50% off. So I'm going to wait for that 50% off. So you're losing opportunity by selling that way. This, this is something that I don't do. And um, I, I don't really bomb the price. Now, what I will do is if you pay one and done, you get a discount for paying up front. Now I'll do that. And if you're on the payment plan, you will pay more. I have no problem with that. That works quite well. But one of the things that um, I have come to understand is there is a rhythm, there's a methodology, there's a structure to selling an online course. And this is why I put the video out. I can tell you what I, what I do, but you can't do it because minority intellectual folks you get this if you're an average person ask yourself when's the last time you read a book there are people who have graduated college that have not read a book since they graduated college so these people are not into the finer arts of education into the finer arts of instruction so you first of all Let's go ahead and talk about the first step to creating an online course. And this is something that I was at odds with people. Like many people will 
find a subject matter and go out and study it for a few weeks or a few months and then create an online course about it. I feel that's a bad way to do it. And I, I don't do that. Like I would never create a course around something because my plan was to get into the auto car rental business, do that for a good year or two, then create an online course, right? No, 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 no. So typically what I do, I create online courses and books and stuff from things I've done for years. Like <clears throat> one of the things is with, that's very difficult about creating a YouTube course. YouTube consistently changes. Right now, I would say we're in YouTube 3.0. There are many people from YouTube 2.0 and 1.0 who are gone. They, uh, one of the big things that happened to a lot of early creators is they outgrew their audience. They started their YouTube channel when they were 15, 16 years old. Now you're a 27 year old male and your audience did not grow up with you and they don't relate to your content. So a lot of these folks just literally stop making YouTube content. Just stop. So it's really hard to create a YouTube course that will encompass, a, encompass, encompass all of that unless you consistently update it. So that's one of the reasons that like, now there are YouTube courses that will teach you how to do YouTube. And one of the things that I do is I use YouTube as a marketing arm. And there's a certain way to do it because I, I see it all the time. It's like, I'm doing YouTube videos. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. As if selling is inherently bad. Many people are not confident in their product. And that's why they don't try to sell it. Like when I created my first digital product, making money A to Z with self storage and auctions, um, I was very proud of that book because I knew that if people followed the instructions and did what I said, they would make money. I knew that. So I don't try to create online courses as a money grab. Like, um, I should take the camera off the tripod and just go around. Like I have art on virtually every wall, right? And the NFT money grab, the NFT money grab. You've got people who are creating NFLTs, Bam Mellon and Kevo, uh, wholesale of millions. This has nothing to do with art. It has nothing to do with the appreciation of art. It's just a money grab. Literally, I've had women tell me, you're the only person I know with art on their walls. I appreciate art. I took commercial art for 12 years. I used to draw and paint, make pottery. So I really appreciate art. It makes my life better. And this is one of the reasons that I'm not into the NFL NFT money grab because that's all it is. It's just a money grab and people are buying into it not because they appreciate art. They're buying into it because if I can make an NFL T and sell it for X amount of dollars, and once again, I feel that market's gonna collapse. You know. There's uh, markets within markets. I feel that there is a legitimate NF NFT market with original artists that have digitized and put their art up. And they're, they're, these are known artists. I feel that's gonna do well. But the NF NFT money grab, and also crypto. I come across very harsh with crypto. And I'm going to state why. To learn about crypto, like there's a crypto called Helium, and people are trying to buy Helium miners. And there's a crypto called Pancake and Auto Cake. And you have to spend so much time studying this stuff because every day there's a new crypto project, there's a new something. You can stake crypto. You can put money here. You can put money there. And for the most part, most crypto has no functional use. None. So at some point, I feel that the majority of today's crypto market is going to crash. I feel in the future, there will be a digital currency. 
And I don't think it will be a decentralized digital currency. I think it will be a centralized digital currency, which is anti the antithesis, the antithesis of most of the people who are in crypto because they want a decentralized currency. They want to own the currency. They want to be able to, to take their currency off the exchange and put it in their little razor or Tesla wallet and own their crypto and control their crypto. And I don't think, you know, if you study currency, we have never had a decentralized currency that has ever reached massive adopt adaptation. Um, I just see that we're going to have a centralized digital currency that's going to be controlled by the governments. And that's going to be the standard, you know, the digital currency that you or I could just make. I don't think there's a future for that. I, I just don't think there's a future for that. I mean, call me crazy because I do feel at some point in the future, digital currency. I mean, if you would think about it from a monetary standpoint, we're halfway there. How many people use cash? I have cash on me, but typically I use my credit card. I pay my bills online. So I am moving money, but I'm not using cash. I'm not using cash. So we're halfway there to a cashless society. We're halfway there. There is a underground uh, current uh, society, an uh, underground economy that runs on cash. But most of us who are in the primary economy, you know, we use credit cards and debit cards. We don't use cash. I used to get pissed when I would get in line behind an old person because I knew the old person was not only going to use cash. The cash wasn't a problem. It was going in the little purse and pulling out the coins. That used to drive me crazy. I'm like, come on, grandpa. Come on, grandma. Get with it. Because it would like take, and that, it, it really wasn't that long. But you're in line, you're impatient, you're just like, come on, man, come on. So I do feel in the future we will have a digital currency, uh, cryptocurrency, but I don't think the majority of the cryptocurrencies that are in existence today will make it. I don't think they will. Also, um, if I was a normal YouTuber, I wouldn't care about you guys. The average YouTuber doesn't give a damn about you. It's like viewers watch my videos and I get that fat YouTube check. And that's something else I'm going to talk about. For many, many years, I really didn't pay any attention to my YouTube earnings because they really were nothing. I mean, until I started Savage Finance. I started Savage Finance and then um, my primary channel jumped. I was making like $5,000 a month YouTube money. Most money ever made. Like my first uh, year with Savage Finance, I did like uh, $50,000, $60,000, right? That kind of got my attention because I wasn't, you know, Savage Finance gets more YouTube money because it's a financial channel. Uh, well, the house of pain. And also, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm getting ready to do. I've got like 4,000 videos, right? Uh, there's no way that the average person is going to just sit and watch all those videos. It's just too many. So what I'm getting ready to do is start moving those videos off of this channel over to the house of pain. So you can watch those videos because I, I, I tried to, I may try two or three a day just to move them over there. Maybe two, maybe two a day, five days a week, we'll see. But that's one of the things I'm getting ready to do. And I'm getting ready to probably the first of April relaunch Savage Finance. Uh, I'm gonna relaunch it. I'm gonna have the edited videos. I'm gonna have the intro of Savage Finance. I'm gonna have all that other stuff. And um, I'm creating a YouTube network. That's what I'm doing. The Institute of Economic Thought is the flagship channel. 
and then disruptive male, then the house of pain, then the corporate gain. I need to start working on pure money. And let, let's talk about pure money. Um, pure money is such a hard thing to do, which is why I'm not really pushing it. <clears throat> um, to make a YouTube channel, to get affiliate income. Now there's, there are some YouTube channels that literally have blown up in a few months. There's a girl launched to wealth. Her channel is not a year old. I think she's got like 300,000 subscribers. I think she makes like 25,000 a month. You do have those stories. You do have those stories, but see her angle, which I feel is very, very smart, is her chart, her channel is targeted to women. She's not trying to speak to everyone. She's trying to help women manage and get their money. So I am creating a YouTube network and I feel in the next three years, once again, this is how you have to think about it in terms of YouTube. You have to think in terms of year one, year two, year three, it'd be like 250 a year. I feel that I can generate YouTube revenue of 250 a year in about three years, which is substantial, which is substantial. But one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is, you know, understand that the folks who came in for the five reasons that black folks don't have money are a different type of audience or a different type of group of people. And you guys are not leaving these stupid, childish, amateur, hating, hating, passive aggressive comments. I literally have people who will leave a comment on another channel in reference to a video that's on another channel. That's common. I'm like, that video, you know, I don't understand why these people are even subscribed to the channels because oh, they're just, I don't understand it. Because I had one, I'm like, why are you even posting this over here? This video, that video ain't even over here. And one of the things I've come to learn is everyone isn't happy for you when you're successful. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. And this is one of the reasons that I am pulling back from the receipts. This is why I'm not showing any more uh, checks or ATM receipts or banking. I'm, I'm not doing any more of that because that brings the wrong kind of people. That brings the childish, that brings the insipid, that brings the passive aggressive. These folks, because there's a fine intersection between education and entertainment. And I'd rather be on the educational side versus the entertainment side. And when you move away from the entertainment side, give you a good example. There's a YouTube channel called Pink Book Lessons, literally blowing up. And it's very much about entertainment, is very much about culture, is very much about trendy and topical events. That is the original aim of the channel and it does it well and it's very successful. I don't run that kind of channel. Like, um, I don't really talk about Omni and the Hellcat that much um, because once again, that stunning, like there, there's a channel, CJ, CJ on 32s. The ch whole channel is literally about him going out and buying cars, taking delivery of my $105,000 car. Mr. Organic, taking delivery. The, these channels are stunt channels. And it's like, it's a form of entertainment. And I don't wanna be part of that. I don't wanna be part of that because to build constructive, positive businesses takes time. And like the whole thing with Daniel Mack, I feel that it's one of the stupidest things ever to go up to someone who drives a nice car and ask them what they do. I don't really see the benefit of that, but for some reason, there are many people who do. There are many people that like that content. I hear that there's someone who's doing the same thing and they're going to knock on the door of people in big houses and asking these folks what they do. And, you know, because it pops up in the YouTube shorts, sometimes I come across it 
in their life. Oh, you're that guy. You're that guy. Oh, it's so. I'm like, he's nobody. He just goes around to people in nice cars and asks them what they do. That is not an earth shattering thing to do. And like I said, I don't like the content. I don't watch it because with TikTok, and I think that that's where he got started on TikTok, is um, a combination of short attention span content where you just consistently, and there's thing, there's a gamification uh, thing that goes on with TikTok that prompts you to move to the next video, the next video. And I've literally heard people, they get on TikTok and they lose two, three hours watching all of this, you know, um, in my opinion, insipid content. There's a guy on TikTok called Two Turned Up Tony. And it's a guy who walks around in his underwear. He has a girl and he will literally have her tee up, put a tee in her mouth and he hit a golf ball off her lips and he will drink some beer and then he would go over and spit it in her mouth. I was like, people like this, people like this. I was shocked. I was like, that's just gross and nasty. And God, hopefully he never has a wet, juicy fart. You know, the kind that turns your white underwear brown. So once again, um, if I were the average YouTuber that I didn't really care about my audience, if I didn't care about outcome, because here's the thing. Everyone here on YouTube who's putting out content, there is an outcome for, you know, it might be an outcome, you know, you're entertaining people. The outcome may be laughter, but if you're in the educational business space or the personal finance space, there, there's an outcome. And a lot of people, I don't really think, give a damn about that outcome because the content, and I, I'm, I'm gonna be really aggressive here, I feel that 90% of the content in the personal finance space is garbage. Uh, one of the things I'm starting to see is saturations, especially in the credit card channels. How many reviews of the Navy flagship credit card can you stomach? How many reviews like, you know, because I'm seeing more and more people come up with credit card, like how to get a credit card increase and all this other stuff. And I'm just sitting there like, that that niche has been is oversaturated because I'm seeing people enter the niche and they're not getting that many views because there's too many of them. And that's another thing. I feel that YouTube has about five years before it's oversaturated. I'm talking about every niche is going to be oversaturated. There's going to be too many content creators and um, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is creating a podcast because I have a media company and I already know where this is going. I'm already starting to see some niches be saturated because there's too many people trying to do the same thing. They're not bringing anything new or innovative. Um, and I'm, I'm starting to see some channels, new channels that really are not going anywhere. Now, if you're an established YouTuber with an audience, that's going to be to your benefit. That's going to help you. But if you're a brand new YouTuber who want to get in the credit card space, personal finance space, there, there it's, it's just becoming saturated with nothing unique, nothing special, nothing. Um, but I feel we got five years before YouTube becomes thoroughly saturated. I feel that certain spaces, it depends upon your personality, it depends upon what you do, that someone can literally come to YouTube and blow up in a year. That, that will still happen, but it's gonna get harder and harder and harder because everyone wants to be a YouTuber and sit at home and make videos and create content and get paid. It's, uh, honestly, it's the best job ever to roll up 
out of bed, turn on the camera, make some content, put it on YouTube, have people watch it, and you get paid. It's a great job. It's a great job. It's a great career. And I feel that the um, more established YouTubers, the bigger YouTubers with embedded audiences, because there's some YouTubers who get more views than cable channels. They have a larger audience than cable channels. Um, so one of the things that we will see going forward, because knowing this, and this is how I use YouTube, I've got five years to pivot. Because what's going to happen with YouTube? There are more and more people coming on YouTube. There's more and more entertainment. And I'm like five, maybe seven years before it's going to be so hard for you to be noticed on YouTube. It's going to be so hard because there, there's coming a saturation point. Like I said, in the personal finance niche, credit cards saturated. There are too many people who are doing credit card reviews. There's just too many of them. And all of these channels have under 10,000 subscribers. They may have a video that will pop here and there. But yeah, there, there's too many people talking about credit cards. Five years ago, there was hardly anyone talking about credit cards. And these channels blew up. Ask Sebi. And Ask Sebi has done something very smart. He has a YouTube channel and he has a website. That was very, very smart. So uh, that's one of the things that's helped me. I have YouTube channels and I have websites. So going forward, like I said, um, I'm not showing any more receipts. I'm not going to be flexing no more going to the ATM, uh, uh, no more posting banking. No, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Because that inherently brings the wrong people to the channel. It brings these passive aggressive haters who literally will like go to all of my channels and subscribe and they will get so much in their feelings that they will post a comment on one channel for a video that's on another channel because they're emotional little beast. They're deeply emotional. They, they don't even know how to self-regulate. And I want to stick with the people who came in from the five reasons that, you know, black folks don't have money. I like that group of people. I love that group of people. I enjoy that group of people. I enjoy having conversations with that group of people. But these passive aggressive, get money quick hype boys, and it's mostly men. It's not that many women. It's mostly men are annoying. They get on my nerves and I wish they would all just die. Because for me, from this standpoint, it doesn't make sense to go to, you know, because they actually actively have to seek me out to do this stuff. And I'm just like, it's annoying. It's just really annoying. But going forward, I realized that I have played a role in bringing these fools to the channel. And that role is now ended. Like there will be no more receipts. And I felt that was really helpful and that generated a lot of trust because for the people who are emotionally well balanced, they understood what I was doing, but it's just bringing in too many of these clowns. I mean, I don't know what I would have done if there was a YouTube when I was in that boarding house. I may have tried to kill myself. I don't know. I don't know because there was no YouTube that was like MySpace, Black Planet. But going forward, I'm going to try to provide you guys with the best content I can. And I'm going to try to do the best job I can. And there are some ideals I have, some things I want to do that I'm going to start doing. But once again, guys, um, you know, this, this YouTube thing is amazing. And I'll be here. I'll be here for the next five years. That will give me 18 years on YouTube. Five years in the future will give me 18 years on YouTube. That's mind blowing. And one of the reasons that I've been able to stay here is I roll with the changes. And 
one of the things that I feel that is really helpful for new content creators is they've changed the YouTube algorithm that pushes new content like crazy. Like, once again, this is why I'm gonna have to put my older content on the House of Pain, and then hopefully you guys will see it because I have so many videos that no one's ever seen, or only a small group of people have seen, that I'm gonna start moving them over there, and I will continue to create new content for the House of Pain. And uh, I will get into new content like with Disruptive Mail. Let's talk about that. I deleted all of those videos. They're all gone, so I have to create them from scratch. There's no way that I can put those videos back up. So I gotta create new content from scratch. The corporate game is new content from scratch. Um, so we, we got a lot, we got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. But that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm getting into. This is what I'm doing. So if I was a normal YouTuber, I wouldn't care. But I do care. I really, really care because I know that there's someone that's going to come across this YouTube channel. They're going to get addicted. They're going to take action. And I want them to have a positive outcome. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you in the next one.